Good morning. Oh, me. I've got to find some coffee. Now. Tama connector toward I, uh, Parkway. Then turn right onto Georgia to, uh, 25, Spur South. Planet Fitness got me a shower earlier here in Brunswick, Georgia. I spent the night at a Cracker Barrel, which there had several RVs next to me. It was very nice. I went in, asked them if everything was cool. Like, you know, if I was going to have any problems or anything. Not like, can I stay there? They're, they all know anyway. And she goes, no, a lot of RVs stay there. It's not a problem. Because I asked her, because when you get around interstates in certain places, and things get a little sketchy sometimes. But it was all good. It was all good. No, it's just, I didn't sleep the best. And it wasn't because of where I was at or anything. I don't know what it was. I guess it, it gets like that sometimes. You, know? you don't sleep real well. It is what it is. But I... It's not an early morning here. I guess it's about 10 a.m. I already got my shower, and I'm going to find some coffee. And there's a local place. I like to hit the local coffee shops. I, you know, I was over here by Planet Fitness, by, I guess, their mall here. Um, and there was a Joe Muggs, and I was thinking, I know that name. I'm pretty sure it's a chain. It's the coffee shop that Books A Million does, and they were closed. And I'm like, what? So... But I'm going to hit a local one here, man. That's the best coffee shop to hit a lot of these local ones. Anyway, I like doing that. I do, I do. So, <clears throat> first things first, I want to hit Jekyll Island, man. If you said my last video, <laughs> I got it all wrong about where the Federal Reserve started. I was thinking Tybee Island. It was Jekyll Island. I had Googled it after I said... I'm 100% positive I'm correct on this, but I'll look it up. Yeah, I looked it up. Turn right on the Georgia 25 Spur South Gold It's Jekyll Island. Island. So, Continue on Georgia I can be wrong. Spur like we all can. It's okay. Miles. It's good to be wrong sometimes. let you know that you can be right sometimes. But anyway, let you know you're human if you're wrong. We're not, we're not perfect, that's for sure. It's a good reminder that we're not, so... I'm going to get some coffee, and I'll check back with you guys in a bit. <laughs> I tell you. I got my <clears throat> my coffee. I haven't taken the first drink out of it, but I go in there, and I was like, hey, uh, I just want to get a regular large coffee, light roast, medium is fine if you don't have that. And I was like, you know any sweeteners that are like non, you know, sugar-free or just, I can't have sugar in it. She says, oh, no, uh, we got creamer. We don't have flavor creamers, but we got flavors that have, like, you know, the sugar in them. And then she makes my coffee and says, thank you. Have a good day. I put my stevia in there. She's like, we do have sugar-free flavors if you ever need those. <laughs> yeah, okay. She may not have heard that I prefer sugar-free. You had them after you make my coffee, but oh, well, man, I'm all good with it. It's not that dire. She may not have heard me clear when I said, I can't have a lot of sugar. But the coffee is good, folks. It is very good. Some may say, it's just coffee. But I will say that it tastes better than what I make at home. Not, when I make it myself, it's not bad. It just tastes like coffee you make at home. It's weird because if you notice these coffees you get at the coffee shop, tastes like good coffee and then what you taste at home tastes like coffee you made at home and it's probably how they mix the coffee with the water and of course they like to say it's just how we roast our beans I'm like, i don't know a damn thing about all that, how you roast your beans and all that i just looking for a good cup of coffee sometimes but anyway i think it's time to get our butts to jekyll island see what that's all about i don't know if Jekyll Island is a private island, some of you by now are watching it and have been there going, yeah, it is. You're going to find out it's a private island. I guess we'll find out. I don't, don't think that it is, but I'm here and we're close and we may as well take the parkway in off that bridge and go see it. So that's what we're going to do. And if I see something cool, I'll check back with y'all. Liberty Ship Park in Brunswick, Georgia at the bridge. A lot of people go there fishing. It's so nice. It uh, looks like a really bare version of the one in Mount Pleasant Park at the bridge in Charleston, which is absolutely nice. Beautiful. 
All right, so I stopped here real quick at the bridge at this park. It's a Liberty Ship Park. It's a, it's a fishing pier. It's really cool. A lot of people hanging out here. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Um, this bridge, except the, it's not a diamond-shaped pillar, kind of looks like the Cable Stay Bridge in Charleston, the Ravnell Bridge we have. There's two of these that are identical in Georgia, one in Savannah and one here. They look to be about the same height, but they're not as big and tall as the one we have. In fact, the bridge in Charleston is the largest cable stay bridge in North America, or it was for a while, may still be. The largest cable stay bridge in the world is in Japan, I think, Hong Kong, I'm not sure. Big ass bridge, that's for sure. But I had to stop here, take care of a little something. I have a, I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but hey, RVers talk about it, you know I mean? It's human, we all gotta do it, we all, have to have the same requirement, so why not? Um, my bathroom back here is a Thetford curb toilet. I probably have like brushed over that in my tour, but I, I realized last night how amazing that thing is. Oh my God. If you go watch We're the Russos, and he does a really good review of it, probably the best, because they had the cassette toilet in their Heimer active van. That RV was cassette, was built in the side of the van and the toilet came in. It was a Thetford, but it was their cassette. It was really cool because that one, it was a gallon smaller than this, which is really a matter because I ain't using five gallons in that tank. It's a five gallon tank. No, hell no. Uh, I want to get that thing cleaned and dumped as quickly as possible. And I did. There was a, a Porta John over here. I scored. I was like, God, I got to find a public park or something to dump this thing. Jeez Louise. So I was about to walk into, go over to the interstate to a rest area, walk in the restroom, which would have been fine, but a little awkward. But anyway, those cassettes have wheels on the cart and you can roll it, this kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I had to tend to that real quick in about five minutes it was done. Easy cleanup. And what I did is they had those tablets that you can treat the tanks with. I've mentioned this before. If you're going to um, and in fact, I need to put some some in there. If you're going to have like an RV or a Thetford like that, um, to treat the tank, the best one is Dawn dish liquid and Calgon water softener. Even with Dawn dish liquid, you're not going to get any smells. It's going to be clean. It breaks it down a lot better, almost like because it's got a little bleach in there, and uh, it keeps everything at bay. You just on a cassette toilet want to empty as quick as possible. Cool thing is it's convenient where you can empty that thing quick anywhere. Yeah, I can. I grab the cassette, turn it open. And whatever you do on that cassette toilet, there's a little white button. It's a pressure relief. You better hit that button. That thing starts barking and spitting at you. Whatever's in there is coming right back at you. You don't want that. That's a little side note. That's People have found out the hard way on that deal. But anyway, the Thetford Curve is the best portable toilet out there in the market. You get people that, I'm not paying $110 for a toilet. Listen, that's the best price one and the best one. You got these composted toilets and stuff like a thousand bucks. Like I ain't spending that kind of money on something I gotta go get little peat moss or what they call something bark and break it all up and do all that stuff and crank it and blah, 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 blah and separate this and separate. Hell no, man, this thing is straightforward. You go, you flush with water just like at home. It has a six gallon water tank. You hit the water to go. Uh, if you don't want to hit that battery in that tank, you can pour water in there. It's okay. All fine and dandy. Just make sure that, you know, you understand things about that cassette. It is the best one on the market. I found out last night just how freaking amazing it is. I only use that thing for emergency purposes only. Now, I wouldn't say it was a dire emergency, but I was in an area where at the time that it was, I there were no bathrooms to go to. So, hey, we're human. That's what it is. <sighs> So enough of that crap. <laughs> anyway, I'm heading across the bridge to Jekyll Island, and uh, if I find anything cool, I'll check back with you.
Well, Jekyll Island is pretty cool. You probably noticed I didn't really show any video of it, me going through it because, um, number one, to confirm that, yes, Jekyll Island is where the Federal Reserve started. Uh, in the Jekyll Club Hotel, there is actually a room, the guy said, here at the Guest Center. There's a visitor center. It's really cool. They did a good job of this. Um, and so there's a, in the Jekyll Club Hotel, there's a room, says the Federal Reserve Room. It was the room, very historic hotel, where the room where these three guys got together and they met to start up the Federal Reserve, which is crazy as hell how that whole thing started. Um, I'll be honest, I ain't always, I don't always agree with the Federal Reserve. I don't, you know, I don't like who's manipulating that now. It's almost like the same people are manipulating it for their own benefit, the Federal Reserve with these interest rates. And people, it, it, that's a that's a debate that could go on for days with people like, no, man, you got to fluctuate your interest rates. No, I think, you know, when you hike up interest rates, you're killing the economy, you know. But I think it's the differentiation between interest rates and your investment to interest rates when you're purchasing homes or cars should be separated in the sense of, you want to boost an economy, lower interest rates on purchasing of homes and cars and, and, and regulate them with credit cards because these banks get away with murder. You probably agree the Federal Reserve probably gets away with murder. It's not, one thing's for sure, the Federal Reserve is not the federal government. It's it's an independent entity, and that's scary within itself. There's, there's a few independent people in our country that are controlling our economy and our money and what we spend. I don't understand that, but I'm not an economist either, and I think if I read up more about it, I would. But anyway, back on Jekyll Island, it's, if you notice, I kind of scanned the little map of it. It's really cool. There are campgrounds. There is day use. I, I'm not really going through here. There is a gate here that's really nice and set up where it's a it's a public historic island. It's, she's The guy in there said that uh, very few people live on this island. There's a few houses, but they've been there for like ages we're talking about family ha homes that have been there and the family hasn't let them go you know and there's a lot of money probably in that family probably in the same damn family that's controlling your federal reserve i don't know but it's crazy probably the guggenheim family probably owns it hell the guggenheim family historically if you don't know this in charleston south carolina right outside the daniel island area the guggenheim family owned most of all that real estate over there it's all Guggenheim. You'll see a Guggenheim corner or something like that, Daniel Hines. The Guggenheims had past, past presidents way back in the, way back in the day, like FDR and these guys, you know, Roosevelt hunting over there in Daniel Island. And I lived there. I was born there and didn't realize up until about 10, 15 years ago that that would exist. And I was like, of all the things, just didn't know that. You learn things about where you live at some point in your life you didn't really know but Jekyll is cool I want to come down here more and I know you're probably thinking you're a real shitty tour guide dude <laughs> no, I'm not I just don't feel like paying eight to ten dollars if I'm not staying down here all day I'm, I've got I'm heading towards Amelia on Fernie the beach and see what's going on then I'm just kind of feeling my way around but I'm gonna come down like hunting island in here I want to plant the RV and stay you know kind of off season a little bit where it's not as hot and Past hurricane season, especially. Oh my God, I get past hurricane season would be okay. It'd be much easier to put that RV at the point of the beach of that breeze and write some music and do that. It's so cool. But uh, I promise you, I'm not a bad tour guide, but I'm not the best at it either. But I'm gonna ease on down the road towards Amelia Island, Fernandina the Beach. Um, I did ask them about St. Simon's Island, north of us, and it's more of a residential island. It's kind of like. Uh, I guess it's kind of like Sullivan's Island where we live. You know, there's a couple of restaurants and stuff, but it's mostly residential. Not a whole lot of public. There's public access for beaches, but not not as commercialized as some of the other beaches that we have or or some of these other beaches on the coastline. So, But anyway, when I see something cool, I'll cut you in on it. Until then. <laughs> Stop to get gas here on the 17 Highway in the middle of nowhere here in Georgia. And it said Flash Foods, but I think Circle K owns them. And you see the old style gas pumps. There's no no credit cards on the pumps. So you had to go give them the card and do it, and then they run it. So that's if you're a lot younger than me, you don't remember that. How you had to get gas, you pay cash for it, and what you don't use, they refund back to you your card. So prepaid or just give them the card. Trust that they'll give it back to you, which they, people always are. 
then the lady working here, she's a little nice. She was sitting outside and she was like, I don't mean to be nosy, but is that there like one of them mobile type home things you got there in that van? Is that what that is? So, yeah, I think they know. So, you know, people think they know, they hear about it. And I said, yes, ma'am, it is. I opened the doors for her and showed it to her. She was like, oh, wow, that's cool. And the, you get the spill. My husband and I have always wanted to do that. The kids are grown and out of the house. So that's usually the story. You get to a certain age. But anyway, I've got gas in the van. Figuratively speaking. And I'm heading towards Amelia Island. It says I'm 35, 40 miles from there. So I get down there. We'll see. I might can stop a place, maybe get some music done today. Kind of, I'm not in a hurry. Just decide what I want to do. I don't know if I want to maybe get a little campsite on the beach or something. That would be cool today. So we'll see. If you guys have been to Florida before, there's something driving through Florida, the RV, van. Now, RVs they don't really mess with, but vans like this, technically, technically this is a cargo van. They don't know what's in it. So you've got to stop. Um, if you convert a van, and I'm just going to tell you right now, in its cargo van, know this, you go in and out of Florida, and I don't care if it's a back road or, or interstate, they have the agricultural inspection stations. You have to stop. And they're over every road going in and out of the state. You're not getting in and out of Florida without hitting ag police. If you pass that, they're gonna pull you over. Now, you play dumb the first time, they won't write you a ticket, they'll just let you know, but know this, and I'm gonna tell you why by experience in a second here. I know this by experience. This is experience talking to you right here. Listen up. You're, if they pull you over and you don't stop and you're from out of state, they'll give you a warning. And they'll tell you this. Just know that your your current registration on this vehicle is done. As, I don't know the best way to, term, to put it is, is marked. So no matter who's driving the vehicle, we either get arrested or get a ticket. And the guy told me one time that you could get arrested. They're serious about this stuff because they're looking not just for cows and horses and agriculture. They're looking for stolen vehicles. They're looking for amber alerts and a lot of other things. Other things. Um, I had a business for many years. It was a flower shop there in the Charleston area. I probably mentioned this before. I used to come down to Florida to get plants, and I had a little silver Nissan MB200 van. I didn't know I had to stop. I had no clue. I probably drove down here about four months before they actually stopped me cop saw me and he goes listen this is a commercial vehicle you got business tags we don't know what's in it he didn't know but next time remember you get in a lot of trouble um there was a time when i was coming back up one of the plant suppliers didn't put the stamp on it and when i handed all the invoices they pulled me over and inspected it and i had to get in touch with the plant provider to fax it over and it was all good but she got fined about 350 dollars for not putting that stamp on that paper but he was telling me that two weeks prior to that a rod the baseball player that was married to madonna bought a several million dollars worth of artwork up in new york and they were trucking it down to florida and it went through ag and the guy did not uh well he had his invoices for it but didn't know a rod didn't pay sales tax on it in florida so they hit him for sales tax on it and they came in on that artwork. Didn't know that. He said they find missing persons, people that are wanted, um, stolen vehicles. He's, you would believe the farm equipment, the 18 wheelers that are stolen, they're trying to get out of Florida or something. But, you know, it's not just about horses and cows and cotton or anything else like that. So just know you're going in and out of Florida if you're in one of these cargo vans, stop at the ag station. Now, there is a chance that you get in the left lane and you will, I don't know what this car is doing behind me. There is a chance that you will go past it, they may not stop you. They waved me past earlier, I was on the back road. It was weird because I was in the right lane and I stopped. But it was one of those things that I, um, you know, just stopped and looked around and I saw them wave me on, they were cool. They know sometimes, they can see the solar panels up top. They see that all the time, they know. But, Make the effort to stop, because if you don't, they're going to figure you're hiding something, and you don't want any of that. They could write you a ticket the first time. Depends on the officer. Oh, me. Well, I've been here in Fernandina Beach for a few hours. 
I, uh, let's see if I can see. It's a place called Salt Life Food Shack in Fernandina Beach. I sat and ate lunch and I did some work for a few hours. I uh, kind of looked up going, uh, when the shift changed and the girl asked me if anybody had helped me, I was like, uh-oh, I think it's time to, to go. I think I've worn my welcome out, but hey, I had lunch there, did business with them. I didn't just sit down and take up their table and be rude like that. You know, I mean, it was cool of them to let me sit at the table and do some work, so. Got some music done. I love it. I'm just sitting here figuring out my next move, and I think I'm gonna go for a walk here. I've got a good spot here for the day, and didn't have to pay to park. It's just pretty cool about Fernandina, man. It's nice down here. I like Amelia Island and Fernandina Beach. It really is nice. There's a few corners in Florida that I, I actually like. But uh, I'll tell you, the Cracker Barrels have worked out very well. I can't complain with Cracker Barrels. Um, it'll be here in, I probably, there's one in Kingsland. I'm going back to Kingsland, Georgia. Which is very close here. It's just right over the bridge into Georgia. It's okay. I'm going to stay at the Cracker Barrel there. Unless I find something over here. It's not too much over here. St. Augustine, it'll be Cracker Barrel. Now, Panama City Beach is going to get a little tricky. Cracker Barrel still winning in that deal. No one said that they kicked them out. But apparently, down there in Panama City and Panama City Beach, they've got ordinances against parking at Walmarts. And... Uh, Cracker Barrel allows it, RV and bus parking, so it's a good chance they're probably not going to say anything with my van sitting here, but I'm probably going to have to pull some stealth, um, but it'll be okay. I'm about 12 miles from where my brother's staying, that's nothing. I'll get up, get my coffee, and get in the car and be down there, because uh, my nephew's baseball tournament is going on down there, and, and I figure I'd go down there and watch him play baseball a little bit. Hang out with those guys a little bit. I haven't seen my brother and his kids and wife since Christmas. This whole pandemic, man, I ain't seen, I haven't seen anybody really. It's crazy. It really is nuts. It is absolutely insane. You would think we could get through all this shit, man, with this pandemic, but it is what it is. Anyway, something cool happens, you know I'll, I'll let you in on it. I will definitely do that. So, I'll check back in with you later. It's nice out here at Fernandina Beach. I'm telling you guys, it is so nice. There's a few corners in Florida, like I said, I like. And this is one of them. These mats here are so cool. We need them in Charleston. When you're coming off the beach, you want to get the sand off your feet. This is a good way to do it. These are cool. Now I can walk out here to the beach and I have to worry about getting sand all over my toes if I don't want to. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be a wuss or anything. If you don't feel like getting sand on your feet, that's okay. Sometimes you don't want to do that. But like I say, I'm just walking around. People are uh, keeping distant out on the beach. I see it's not too packed. It's not too crowded. It's actually nice. And this breeze feels good. It really does. Okay, so this kind of make up for me being a shitty tour guide earlier at... Uh... Jekyll Island. When you're on A1A coming past Amelia Island into Jacksonville, instead of there's a there's a military, there's a naval base, like a small where they work on uh, naval ships and stuff. Some of those battleships, so you can't get across, the road doesn't go. Instead of getting back on 295 and in interstate and going around downtown, there's a ferry. It's a St. John's River ferry, and it's like seven bucks on the week per car and eight dollars in the weekend. I think you said per car. Um, I'm going to take it. I've never had my vehicle on a ferry, and I think it'd be freaking cool. But it's going to cut me across to A1A, and I'm, I love this. Yes, this is the small things, folks, that makes this all so good. Let's see a part of the adventure. This is the stuff you don't do and see if you go down the interstate, my friends. If you're not in a hurry, take the back road. So um, I'm going to kind of do a time lapse, get me on the ferry. It'd be kind of cool. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done this, so... Uh, and uh, if anything else cool happens, you know I'll cut you in on it. You know this. So apparently it's a pedestrian and car ferry. Pretty cool. Alrighty, we're going into the ferry, folks. 
This is pretty cool. It's my first time putting my vehicle, putting my vehicle on a ferry. I like this. This is crazy. I like this. Yeah, that is uh that was cool that really was cool man i love it that's the ticket we need ferries like that in charleston man i'd be taking them across the water in a heartbeat man that's that's the ticket you can get ferries that can hold enough cars that can alleviate a lot of traffic oh man that is st john's river ferry guys if you're coming out of amelia on a1a you don't want to have to it'll cut you over here where the coast guard pays between that and the naval yard over here um and it'll take you out down a1a and on down it's really cool man it's beautiful down here it is just gorgeous that's the ticket florida florida's got it going on man when it comes to the infrastructure i'll give it to florida all day long better than south carolina they're building the infrastructure and they're getting it done in florida and that's how you do it man. that's how you do it indeed I need to re-clarify something because earlier you probably wonder, hey, wait a minute, what's he in Jacksonville, St. John's River uh, Ferry and all that jazz? Because I did say earlier I was staying in Kingsland, Georgia, and I was like, you know, I'm not backtracking and doing it. I ain't doing it. I was only about an hour and something, maybe two, to St. Augustine. So I figured I'd just come on down here tonight because spend a day tomorrow hanging out in St. Augustine. And tour around here a little bit. Whatever comes up, I'll do it. I am here at Cracker Barrel in St. Augustine again, and it's going to be a these which winner winner chicken dinner with Cracker Barrel. You better believe it, because they love people in RVs to stay here because they know most of them are going to get up, come in, and have breakfast. I think they're noted for hey, come in and have that little four dollar breakfast where there is in the morning. But anyway, I'm going to chill out here. I didn't sleep a lot last night, but I will tonight. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. But uh, we'll take it from there. We'll see how things go here for the next few days. But until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. And that's today in the bag, my friends. And uh, we'll pick this up in the morning. And I'll cut you guys in on anything cool. Thanks for watching. Be cool. Bye.